Thank you, Niels. I'd like to share another revelation that I'm one of the 50% of Australians who declare myself as having Irish heritage. And I think that's a little less to do with Guinness and more to do with my love of the potato chip. I love potato. If I could marry a potato, I would marry a potato. Okay, so the other thing I'd like to do before I commence the presentation is acknowledge John from Burgent Research, who unfortunately under strict doctor instructions wasn't able to join us today and hopefully he's propped up and watching and I will do the uh, methodology section of this presentation justice in his absence. So let's talk about 7-Eleven in Australia. So many of you would be familiar with 7-Eleven as a brand. In Australia, we have 620 stores, all of which are franchised. We turn over $1.5 billion in merchandise annually, and we serve an amazing six customers per second. This strategic challenge that led to this research had been kicking around the business for a while. We have a strategic objective of being famous for food service, but two years ago, I sat down with my manager, and we said, what is it really going to take to be fair dinkum about this famous for food service strategy and increase the food service or food on the go category, category from being 8% of our merchandise sales and really step change our thinking to become a destination for food on the go for Australians. It, as I said, it was a category that was a strategic objective to grow. So it wasn't one that was languishing, we weren't in decline. This is the growth that we were pre the implementation of this research year on year. And, but if we fast forward to since the implementation of this insight and the many activities we've done as a result of it, we're driving high growth in volume, value and profit. And these are numbers that we're all very excited about. So that was a little spoiler alert. I'll get on to a bit more on the uh, effectiveness in a minute. But let's look at what insights led to these significant increases in performance. So the Burgeon approach was to a four-step iterative process. First up was a knowledge audit. And that knowledge audit included uh, interviews with our CEO, with key franchisee groups, operations, a number of stakeholders across the business. This then informed the qualitative phase, and the reason why there's a picture of a bus up there is that I'm no longer calling them consumers or shoppers, they're now humans. Based on some of the presentations I've seen in this conference, we put a lot of humans on a, a bus and took them around to different competitors and our own stores, and then they interviewed each other. And I've got a couple of those uh, videos to share with you, and talking about their experience within each store. There was a quantitative phase, and I'm sure I'm in the wrong place if I have to explain what a quantitative phase involved, but it was a, a sample of roughly a thousand consumers. And then there was the implementation, and I think uh, a theme throughout the conference that Kate also touched on was the actual buy-in and the implementation across the number of stakeholders is what's really led to a lot of the success we're seeing so far. So what did we find? We found three key things that really step changed our thinking in this category. One, we found that shoppers trust 7-Eleven for quality and freshness. Two, that shoppers actually preferred no service. And three, that 7-Eleven was seen as equivalent to a quick service restaurant or QSR. So let's start with exploring trust. A little bit of a complicated slide, but what we really need to focus on here is the amount of green in the, the bars there that represent the trustworthiness of the packaged goods, so the things that people would come in for, such as the chips and the confection. The trusting in terms of quality and freshness was quite high. When we actually benchmarked that against the food service offer that we had in our stores, it actually was rating really pleasingly high for us as well. So that meant that a lot of the work that we had done in terms of improving our food on the go offer and how it presented in stores had actually done a big job in terms of um, creating trust in the category which hadn't existed 10 years earlier. However, despite this trust being there, the experience for shoppers was that the store was efficient but in no way fun. So words bubbled up through the qual phase in terms of it looks bland, it lacks warmth and offers little distraction or sense of discovery. Let's listen to a shopper. I think when you go into a shop like what we just have compared to a 7-Eleven, you're really buying into the excitement of treats and, and tasting new things. And when you go to a 7-Eleven, I think you know 
what you're going to buy is going to be fine and will satisfy you, but it doesn't go over and above. Mm -hmm. Doesn't go over and above. So we were nailing it in terms of efficiency, but not the experience. So we went on to test six drivers to understand how we could actually leverage this trust and move this category forward in consumers' minds. And what won was the, it's got to be efficient, so we couldn't lose the heartland of being a convenience uh, offer, but there was also the opportunity around the yum, around the craveability, and that was really the white space that we needed to explore. Moving on, we found that shoppers prefer no service. And that's a little bit of a teaser, because really it means that they preferred self-service, with over three quarters of shoppers saying that they actually preferred to be left alone in our stores. So this was because they saw two benefits of being left alone by staff. The first was anonymity, which meant no judgement, freedom, and a little bit of naughty fun. It's not like when you're buying clothes and you want to be sold something, like if you're I'm trying to be sold a pie. Just like, I'm putting this in my, in my mouth, leave me alone. I, I'm choosing one. Like, this is you know, my health, my body. When it's like a product, I don't mind to be like, talked to and try to be navigated to something interesting. But like with food, I don't really want that. Very typical 7 Eleven shopper. The other benefit of self service that it gave control, flexibility, and involvement in fu and fun. I like that you can serve yourself. I think it's good that you can do that. What's um, good about that? That you can kind of choose to have it as full as you want or as you know, little as you want. You can combine flavours if you like. Um, sounds a bit of fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which was very exciting for us because we were actually going very much down a path of building what we thought a consumer would want in terms of being served their, pro their food on the go offer in our stores. Finally, we found that shoppers already saw 7-Eleven as equivalent to a quick service restaurant. Now this is the one that we had Burgent check the numbers about three times because we could not believe that in terms of the unaided recall of stores selling food on the go in Australia, we were in the mix with the likes of McDonald's, a Subway, KFC, Hungry Jack's slash Burger King, and we're in that top five in those red bars there with a tale of very well-known QSRs in the Australian market. So this was really curious to us because we thought we would be a long way off that benchmark. But the insight really showed us that what we were sitting in there in terms of the brand mind map, that we were actually sharing these attributes with the quick, quick service restaurants. And when you think about it, we're quick, we had that service that people wanted, the restaurant bit was a little bit more blurry. So in terms of what that offer looks like, when you go into a McDonald's or a, uh, another quick service restaurant, you'd be after a real meal or snack and you would couple a burger with a fries, for example. In 7-Eleven, you would still have the same customer need, but you would create a meal with a packet of chips, a Snickers bar and a Coca-Cola, for example. But nevertheless, the, in the customer's mind, this was still a real and legitimate meal for that occasion. This was our great insight. We already were a quick service restaurant and not the traditional grocery store or convenience outlet. So within our stores, each meal has actually has different marketing needs when we think about packaged first food service. So our packaged uh, items, so our great confectionery, our slurpees, etc. we want to rejoice and re reinforce those. So it's very key that we didn't lose sight of what customers were coming into us to eat. Our food service offer, however, we needed to build awareness and build the craveability, i.e. the yum. But when we put these offers together in store, what we're actually doing is giving our customers real choice, real non-judge choice across categories. So that's the three key insights that have been game-changing for us. One, 7-Eleven is trusted for quality and freshness, consumers prefer self-service, and that we're seen as equivalent to a quick service restaurant. Then back into the business, so that was John's bit, back into the business, what did we actually do with this insight? So we actually took the bold step of branding a number of categories that we sell in food service to 7-Eleven. And that actually involved uh, uh, decommissioning a sub-brand that we created and also removing one of the biggest name in pies in the Australian market out of our stores, which was considered quite risky. To date, we've seen the sky hasn't fallen down. We've seen record growth across pies, sandwiches, and the humble muffin at 65% growth. 
That new store layout that we're activating based on food service, if we look at the orange line there, that is how our comp comparable stores track. Our new store layout is actually doing, uh, in terms of its contribution of food service sales to merchandise sales, is kicking up to that double digit growth, which is amazing versus the 8%. Brand consideration has gone up, so the marketing team's happy, and it's gone up with that kick since the implementation, but it's actually maintained there, which um, previously, if we did some activity, we'd see a boost and fall down, but is now maintaining despite if we're on or off air. This is an example of our new TVC, which is leveraging a lot of the other insight in the research. And we're actually outperforming all campaign norms in terms of new information and different information. And as a retailer, the fantastic thing is that our brand appeal for this new 7-Eleven range, as well as a shopping intent, is also performing well above norm. And this is, makes us very happy. This um, brand equity pyramid that we have for a number of years, it's been very, very skinny at the top, and we've been wanting to feed it lots of pies and sausage rolls to fatten it up. And if I draw your attention to the affinity in the peer, and appeal, in the last read, we're actually seeing significant uplifts in these two measures, which really means we're starting to tap in to the emotional opportunity in this category. So the numbers are looking great, but also we now have a common language to break down silos across the business. We have a complete way to view our branding, our advertising, our store design, and everyone across the business can talk about a freedom of choice meal. Had to pop this one up one more time. <laughs> so in terms of where we've landed, we're, we're currently tracking with high growth in volume, value, and profit. And for an investment of $100,000, which even in my budget is still a significant amount for the business to put forward, to date we've seen an incremental $5.2 million, and that is incremental sales in this category, and that's over six months. So marketers are happy, insights managers are happy, my boss is happy, which is great. But also, we were out in stores a couple of weeks ago and interviewed a customer and some franchisees, and I'd like to leave you with this video. I used to be um, big on the Slurpees um, and the drinks and stuff like that, and now it's more so the um, food side of things, so it's just sandwiches, your donuts. But now it has become more of a trend that, okay, lunchtime, uh, do you want to go to Subway, KFC? Oh, okay, let's go to 7-Eleven, 7-Eleven have got wonderful um, sandwiches, wonderful pies. I would almost say more confident in the freshness and the quality of the product knowing that it's 7-Eleven branded. Franchises are making better money from food service. The GP is going up. The profit that they are making per store per day has gone up. If I look at my store, I used to be around the um, 200, 220. Now it's almost touching $400 per day, so, which, is, which is great. Thank you.